Good evening, East Alabama. Welcome into the locker room on this Wednesday afternoon. I'm Nemeth Pitts. We've officially reached the halfway point of the week, with it being Wednesday, and we are still trying to continue with having a great week, giving you the most up-to-date local sports news right here in East Alabama. This week, we've been covering the U-Triple-S-A Regional All-Star, Tur- All-Star Tournament, which features a couple different locations. You have games being played at Earl Martin at Oxford Lake, games being played at White Plains, games being played at Alexandria, and I believe by the end of the week, even Center will have had a game or two when it's said and done. Last night, I was at White Plains Youth Fields. Our intern, Tyler, was at Alexandria Youth Fields. So today, we're going to have highlights of White Plains versus Aniston Tenu. Alexandria versus Piedmont Tenu, and Pleasant Valley versus Glencoe Tenu. So we're going to have three different games of highlights tonight as we continue on. Hey, we've got a great show tomorrow. Justin Cottle from Fellowship of Christian Athletes will be joining us to talk about a big home run derby coming up. Also recap their summer camp and look at their power sports camp. And then again, of course, I want to remind you like I do each and every day to hit that like and follow button on our East Alabama Now page so that you don't miss the locker room. We're here three days a week for the months of May, June, and July. And then also we have our East Alabama Now news tonight at 6.30 p.m. Mike Stedham and Katie Edwards have your local news. John Holder has your local weather, and I will bring you your sports. All right, last night I went from Alexandria on Monday to White Plains on Tuesday. Last night I made my way out to White Plains before I figured out that I had left my SIM card at home. I turned back around, drove 20 minutes back home, got the SIM card, turned back around, and went back to White Plains. Finally, I made it there by 7 p.m. to catch the evening game featuring the 10U team, White Plains versus Aniston. So, with that being said, let's go out to White Plains Youth Field for the 10U highlights between the Wildcats and the Bulldogs. Here we go before the game. Here's the two coaches meeting with the umpires before the game. White Plains 10U team getting ready to take the field. Barksdale gets the start on the mound for White Plains. So Barksdale is going to start the game by getting Braylon Curry to strike out looking. And Barksdale would make it back-to-back strikeouts after getting Marcedric Williams Jr. to strike out looking. Ethan Kroon for for Aniston, though, would draw the walk for the Bulldogs, so he will make his way to first base. Well, you know Aniston likes to steal, so Ethan Kroon, Going to try to go first to second. Barksdale attempts a pickoff move to second base, and White Plains gets Kroom out trying to steal a bag. Great pickoff by Barksdale. Speaking of Kroom, he is the starting pitcher for Anison. We're going to start the action. Hollingsworth at the plate for White Plains. Hollingsworth is just going to punch one right over the infield, and that is going to be an infield single for Hollingsworth. Now Sanders at the plate. He's going to hit a single over the infield into the outfield. That one goes into center field as Sanders hits a single. Now up at the plate, it's Barksdale. Barksdale is going to hit one that's going to bounce through the infield into the outfield. That's going to end up being a two-run RBI triple. You see, going around third into Holmes, one run. Sanders already scored. That's two runs. Barksdale gets a two-RBI triple to center field for the Wildcats. Barksdale, though, would be out trying to go home on a wild pitch, so Aniston prevents giving up a run right there. Now at the plate's Turner. Turner's going to hit one to left field. That's going to drop. That's going to be a single for Turner. Followed by Turner now at the plate is Brown. Brown's going to hit a double. That's going to go off the third baseman into the outfield. He's going to go around first to second. This guy's looking Turner's going around third. Going to go back. Ultimately, that would end up being a double to left field for Brown. Turner now gets in a rundown situation, but nobody covering the bag, so Turner would get back to third base safely. Then Turner would come home on a wild pitch right here. He's going to score safely at home plate. Got to make sure you slide. Needless to say, that's a run. Lynch at the plate. Titus Lynch going to draw the walk. With that, Brown's going to score on the wild pitch. So that's going to move a runner over. Gardner on the base path. He's going to come home on a wild pitch. A lot of wild pitches by Aniston. Scored a lot of White Plains runs. Gardner scores right there. Titus Lynch, who got a walk just a second ago, he's going to score at home on a wild pitch. Got a little little butt slide right there for Titus Lynch. He goes in and gets another run for the Wildcats. Hollingsworth at the plate. He's going to hit an infield grounder that is fielded and thrown to first base for the out. White Plains scores eight in the first inning, but Aniston ends the inning. Aiden Colbert up at the plate for Aniston. He's going to draw the walk for the Bulldogs. So Aiden Colbert going to make his way to first base. Now Aiden Colbert's going to try to steal to second base. You see him take off right here as soon as the pitch is thrown. He's just going to slide in second base. Aiden Colbert is safe. 
at second base. Barksdale goes back to the plate. He gets Jayshon Sims to strike out looking. Barksdale this time going to attempt to pick off Colbert at third base. Can be a bad throw, and that is going to allow Colbert to score at home. Aniston gets on the board their first run of the game. Now at the plate is Bentley Curls. He's going to draw the walk for the Wildcats. Bentley going to make his way to first base. And he's going to create some havoc on the base pass. He's going to force a throw over. That's a ball called on Braylon Curry. Curry, so that ball allows Curls to advance to third base. It's now Bentley Curls at third base. Sanders at the plate. Sanders is going to hit an infield fly. And it would be caught by the Bulldogs for the out. This time, Prozinski hits an infield grounder. It can't be fielded by Aniston, so Prozinski would be safe at first base. Clark still at the plate. He hits an infield grounder. That one cannot be fielded. Goes right off the shortstop, and second baseman gets or gets into second base in just enough time. All runners are safe. Now Prozinski is going to score at home plate. That's another run for the Wildcats. Barksdale is going to end up in a rundown between third base and home, but ultimately he would be tagged and would be out. Barksdale is tagged out by Kroon for the out. How about this hit right here? Spivey at the plate, Curry on the mound. Curry's going to throw it. Spivey's going to hit it to deep left field. That's going to go over the left fielder's head. Spivey goes around first, second. Could he get an in, inside the park home run? He's going to go around third. If he wouldn't have stopped running, obstruction could have been called, but because he stopped, you can't call it. He's going to end up at third. That is a triple for Spivey. Now Spivey's going to score home on the wild pitch. He is safe, and that is another run for the Wildcats. Hollingsworth on the mound for the Wildcats now. He's going to get crewed to strike out looking. Beautiful pitch. It drops in right down the middle. Pitching for Aniston now, Aiden Colbert. He's going to get Lynch to strike out looking. And then on the mound again, Hollingsworth. He's going to get Kingston Williams to strike out swinging. And White Plains 10U would get the win over Aniston 11-2. And White Plains this week for the All-Stars for 10U. Got a big win over Heflin. Got a big win over Aniston. So in pool play, White Plains makes it 2-0. Giving up that second run, though, dropped them out of that two seed in terms of the bracket play. But needless to say, great team win for the White Plains Wildcats 10U team. We enjoyed being out there last night, catching the highlights between them and Aniston. Coach Colbert does a great job at Aniston. And a great game between the two teams. Hey, our intern Tyler was at Alexandria last night. We were both there Monday. I sent him out by himself last night. He went to Alexandria. He got some highlights of two more 10 games that we're going to talk about. So when we come back, Alexandria and Piedmont, always a good rivalry. Those two go head-to-head in 10 baseball. We have the highlights when we come back. able to connect faster than ever through technology, maybe you've noticed that real connection is hard to come by. Parker Memorial Baptist Church offers you a place to connect, a place to learn more about Jesus and the difference He can make in your life, a place to build relationships with like-minded believers or maybe discover what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ, a place to use the gifts and talents God has given you, a place where we love God and we love you. Parker Memorial Baptist Church, 1205 Quintard Avenue, Anniston. Visit our website for details. We continue on on the locker room on this Wednesday afternoon, the halfway point of the week. Hit that like and follow button right now because, guys, we have a big EA and summer giveaway coming up, but you're not eligible to enter that giveaway unless you follow our page. And that EA and summer giveaway is going to feature a lot of local businesses, gift cards, and a lot of great stuff that you can win exclusively right here on our East Alabama Now page. But again, you must be following our page to be eligible to enter that. All right, last night I was at White Plains. Tyler was at Alexandria. Let's go out to Alexandria. Field number two for the 10U game featuring the Valley Cubs and the Bulldogs. Let's talk about it right here. Coach Walden for Alexandria. Got the coaches meeting with the umpires for the game. Masters gets the start for Piedmont. Carter Tuck hits a single to right field. With that single, Wiley Finley would score at home for the Valley Cubs. Now at the plate for Alexandria, it's Eli Welch. He hits a ground ball that could not be fielded, and Welch is safe at first base. Now at the plate, Griffin Hamby. Griffin Hamby's going to hit a ground ball. That one stopped, but not filled in time, and Hamby is safe at first base. Riker Daly's going to hit a pop-up into 
the pitcher, Masters, he's going to catch that one right there. Pop up, caught by Masters. Tanner Dome is going to hit a ground ball, and Piedmont can't field it. Alexandria scores a run right there on the Tanner Dome ground ball. Masters gets Aiden Fomby to strike out swinging. A wild pitch by Masters would allow Griffin Handy to score at home. You see Griffin Handy go in the home right there. Now at the plate, Johnny Walden. Johnny Walden's going to draw the walk for Alexandria, and Bentley Hillier is going to score on the wild pitch by Piedmont. Now pitching for Alexandria is Griffin Hamby. He's on the mound. Prater hits a fly ball to left field. That one is dropped, and Prater is safe at first base. Griffin Hamby attempts the pickoff move to second base. Alexandria gets Prater in a rundown. The ball is there. Doan drops it, though, and Prater is safe at third base. Griffin Hamby, though, gets Glover to strike out looking. All right, this time Cooley at the plate. He's going to hit a pop-up into foul territory, and Riker Daly is going to make a great catch as Riker Daly gets the out. Now let's go back to Piedmont on the mound. Masters, Hank Ginn at the plate. Hank Ginn's going to strike out, but he's going to advance to third base on the drop third strike. And with that being said, Cameron Elder scores at home. Hank Ginn, though, going to try to advance to second base. He would be out trying to advance. Now at the plate, it's Wiley Finley. Wiley Finley's going to hit a double to deep left field. That one's going to go deep to the fence. And Wiley is then going to think about it, goes back to second, waits for the throw infield, now going to try to go to third. Wiley Finley's going to advance from second to third. All right, there's Wiley Finley right there. Deep double to left field. Glover now pitching for Piedmont. Eli Welch hits a ground ball into the infield, but no one is at first to cover the bag, so Welch would be safe. Now we're going to have Riker Daly at the plate for Alexandria. Riker Daly is going to hit an infield ground ball. It's going to be stopped. It's going to be a throw and error. And Daly is going to be advancing to second base on the error by Piedmont. So that now puts another runner on second for the Valley Cubs. Bentley Hillier at the plate. He's going to hit one deep to center field. That goes all the way to the fence. That's going to be a triple for Bentley Hillier as he slides into third base safely. Looks like he might have cramped up there. Hopefully he's okay. Aiden Fomby right here is going to lay down a beautiful bunt. It hits the grass and just stops. That's a single for Aiden Fomby. Johnny Wald now at the plate for the Valley Cubs. He's going to hit an infield pop-up, and it would be caught by Masters. Went from pitcher to second base. This kid's playing everywhere. Now Masters at the plate. He hits a pop-up that cannot be caught, stays in bounds, or stays in play, pardon me, and that is a single for Masters. Vic hits a ground ball to Carter Tuck. He's gonna field it and throw it to first base for the out. Now coming on to pitch for the Piedmont Bulldogs, it's Bass. Rhett Ball is gonna hit a single to center field, and Rhett Ball is gonna go into first base safely. Wiley Finley now comes up at the plate. He's already got one double. He's gonna hit another double to left field. He hits that one right over the infield, and that is not one RBI. That is two RBIs for Wiley Finley as he hits a two RBI double to left field. He's going to go into second safely. Carter Tuck at the plate. He's going to hit an infield pop up. That one would be caught by Masters for the out. I feel like Masters has made every out so far. Eli Welch at the plate. He hits a single. That one goes into center field. That is an RBI single as Wiley Finley scores at the plate. Eli Welch would then score on a wild pitch by Piedmont right here by Bass. Bass throws a wild pitch, maybe a pass ball. Either way, Eli Welch scores. He gets into home in time. A little celebration from Eli Welch. Now at the plate, Riker Daly. He hits a fly ball to center field. Masters went from the infield to the outfield. Now he's making the catches in the outfield. You can't make this up. Masters makes the catch in center field for the out. And then to end it, Tanner Dome is going to hit an RBI double to center field, right center field. That's going to score Hillier. And ultimately, Alexandria didn't just beat Piedmont, they dominated Piedmont as the Valley Cubs tenure team got the win over Piedmont by a score of 18 to 1. So with that being said, Alexandria goes 2-0 and in the pull play as they got a win over Glencoe 10 to 2, got a win over Piedmont 18 to 1. So they should be one of the top seeds in the bracket play. We will have to see how that shapes up, but I believe they will be the number one seed for a team that can, again, win big. And Tyler did a good job of those highlights. Thank you, Tyler. He didn't just stay there for one game, though. He did stay there for two. Pleasant Valley and Glencoe played for a little bit until they hit a rain delay. That then ended the game. We do have 
some of the highlights before the rain hit. We'll show you those highlights in just a minute when we come back on The Locker Room. Spring into freshness at WM. Celebrate the season with our bountiful selection of farm fresh produce. From juicy berries to crisp greens, taste the flavors of spring at WM. Visit us today and let the freshness bloom in every bite. For metal buildings in Alabama and the Southeast, Waldrop Manufacturing is your one-stop source. A Waldrop metal building provides the coverage and protection your investments need. They specialize in carports, RV covers, portable buildings, and storage buildings. Stop paying rent for storage. With Waldrop's price per foot, you can actually save money by buying straight from the manufacturer. Waldrop buildings are guaranteed because Waldrop manufactures buildings with U.S. Steel right here in Calhoun County. Waldrop Manufacturing, serving the entire Southeast. Give them a call today. For over 60 years, Oxford Lumber has been servicing our area and our customer service has always been our main focus. Our customer service is what sets us apart from anyone else. From the moment you enter, our highly trained staff will treat you like family. To enthusiastically provide total customer satisfaction within a positive and self-fulfilling employee relations environment. Visit us at any of our four locations or at OxfordLumber.com. Welcome back into the locker room on this Wednesday afternoon. I'm Nameth Pitts. This week we've been covering the U-Triple-S-A Regional All-Star Tournament. We've shown you just today alone highlights of White Plains and Aniston Tenu, highlights of Alexandria and Piedmont Tenu. We do have highlights of Pleasant Valley and Glencoe. Now, last night I was at White Plains. All of their games got in before any lightning delays or any rain. But at Alexandria, they entered a lightning delay. The rain started coming down pretty heavy. And from what I understand, action was stopped. So they didn't finish the action at Alexandria last night. But Pleasant Valley and Glencoe were playing before that lightning delay that sent my intern Tyler home, and Tyler got us some of the highlights. So with that being said, let's go back out to Alexandria for the Pleasant Valley Raiders 10U team versus the Glencoe Yellow Jackets 10U team. Here's the coaches meeting with the umpires before the game. Hey, I think I know those umpires. Two state champions for the Alexandria Valley Cups. Pleasant Valley Raiders 10U team get ready to take the field. Preston gets the start for the Raiders on the mound. Carter Bell for Glencoe would hit an infield single. Ultimately could not be fielded by Pleasant Valley in time. Carter Bell is safe at first base. Now at the plates, Cameron Roach. He's going to swing and miss. Pleasant Valley going to try to throw it to third. It's going to be a bad throw, and Bell is going to go home and score for the Yellow Jackets. At the plate, Isaiah Roach. Isaiah Roach is going to hit one to deep right field. That's going to go past the fielder. Going to go around first and second. Isaiah Roach going to try to stretch it out and get a triple. And Isaiah Roach hits a triple to right field as he is safe at third base. Next up for the Glencoe Yellow Jackets is Braden Lancaster. Lancaster at the plate, waiting on the pitch. It's going to get to him, and Lancaster is going to hit a single. That one's going to go right up the middle of the center field. That is an RBI single for Braden Lancaster. Pleasant Valley, though, Preston would respond from the adversity. Because he's going to get Will Irvin to strike out swinging. You see Irvin swing right there and miss. James Mason gets the start for Glencoe on the mound. Pleasant Valley going to get a leadoff single by Tuck. That one's going to go right over the infield into the outfield. That is a leadoff single for Pleasant Valley. James Mason, though, would follow that up by getting Ridge to strike out swinging. Next up, Mason's going to get Joe to hit into a ground ball to third. That is fielded and thrown to first base for the out. James Mason still on the mound for the Yellow Jackets. He's going to get Jace Payne to strike out looking. Next up, Ryder Lancaster. And he's just going to hit a pop-up. And that pop-up bunt is caught for the out. Gonna throw the third just to be safe. That's a double play. That was a double play for tagging up. Preston would get Ace Goins to strike out swinging. Preston's still on the mound. You're seeing a lot of him. Actually, excuse me, Preston now at the plate. He's gonna hit an infield grounder that is fielded and thrown the first base for the out. James Mason for Glinka though, about to get some strikeouts added to a stat sheet. You're gonna see one right here. This is a strikeout swinging. 
And then James Mason's going to follow up, make it back to back strikeouts, because that's another strikeout swinging. Pleasant Valley now back in the field. Preston on the mound for the Raiders. He's going to get Carter Bell to strike out looking to strike out. Cameron Roach now at the plate for Glencoe. Cameron Roach going to hit an infield single. Pleasant Valley can't field it in time. As it drops, Roach beats it out for a single. Speaking of Roach, Isaiah Roach, he's going to hit an RBI single to center field. That one's just going to drop. More we'll right center, that's going to be an RBI as it scores a run. Next up, Braden Lancaster. He's going to hit a single to left field. See it fielded right there. And that is going to be a single for Glenco. James Mason now going to get the strikeout. So he gets the strikeout looking. And then finally to end the action from Tyler's highlights, my boy Max at the plate. And Max is going to hit a single to – that's going to drop right over center field. Runner's going to run into third. Going to try to go around home. See Lancaster going. Uh-oh. Nope. Going to try to go back to third. Going to slide. Not sure what the call on the field was, but – those are the highlights of the Glencoe Yellow Jackets and the Pleasant Valley Raiders. And again, all of our highlights from Alexandria last night were shot by our intern, Tyler. I think he did a night job for his first time ever doing it on his own without any of us from East Alabama now there. So thank you to him for going out to Alexandria and getting the highlights. Hey, just a reminder, we have our East Alabama now news tonight at 6.30 p.m. And there is definitely some stuff that has happened in Anniston today, so you're not going to want to miss that. Mike Stedham and Katie Edwards can tell you more in just a bit. John Holder's got your local weather. He's going to tell you about the forecast for today, get you prepared for tomorrow's breakfast forecast, tell you about weather on your street. And speaking of the youth baseball that we just talked about, we're going to recap all the scores, show, again, the highlights from the White Plains game, and get you ready for the bracket play elimination side that starts on well, tomorrow. So we're going to go ahead and get you ready for that as we recap the scores. All right, that is going to do it for us today on The Locker Room. Hey, joining us tomorrow in studio will be Justin Cottle, who is a campus missionary, missionary for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. We're going to talk about a big home run derby coming up, talk about a big power sports camp, recap their summer camp, and a whole lot more as we talk Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Hope you'll join us here tomorrow. Other than that, have a great evening. God bless, and thank you for watching The Locker Room.